I'm Amanda, and this is Not Your Granny's Quilt Show. Welcome to today's show, everybody. With me today, I have Mike of Legit Kits. If you have not seen his stuff, it is crazy cool. It's a different approach to foundation paper piecing. Legit Kits has kits for every skill level. Magnificent images come to life with their fabric and patterns. Kits come with generous amounts of fabric for each color. So you have room to make mistakes if you do, which if you're like me and foundation paper piecing, you definitely make mistakes. But they build in a fail safe for you so that you don't have that issue. Legit Kits offers an approachable way to create large scale foundation paper pieced works of art that you can hang in your home or gift. They're really cool. So go check them out and let's hear what Mike has to say. Ding, ding, ding. It's almost time for some gift giving. This is a great time to get your hands on some Not Your Granny's Quilt Show merch. So head over to n-y-g-q-s dot printify p-r-i-n-t-i-f-y dot m-e and shop today hi mike how are you doing i'm great how are you thank you so much for having me on this podcast i'm excited yeah i'm great thanks for asking and thanks for being on the show i i'm new to your your company so I'm actually really excited to talk about it with you and and share it out because now that I know about it I'm like what the heck this is crazy so um (laughs) so but before we get into all that I just want to know like how you came into the quilting world and what led you to start your business legit kits uh I came into the quilting world through my wife um Leela, uh, she's Odell Leela on Instagram. Uh, she and I are very different quilters now. Mm-hmm. Um, I am a certified registered nurse anesthetist at uh, Children's Hospital. Oh, wow. I'm actually calling in from the parking garage of the hospital. I just got off my <laughs> shift, and uh, so um, glad that we can make this time. Um, I have done art my entire life. So as a kid, I was always doodling and painting and whatever. And then as an adult, I I just couldn't stop taking art classes. Um, I'm not formally trained in anything. I've just been doing it and, um, you know, taking classes in all sorts of different media. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got into sewing because I wanted to be Braveheart, Braveheart for Halloween. Oh. And I couldn't find a costume I liked. So I bought a cheap sewing machine at a Joanne Fabrics and doing that made me see fabric differently. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't, didn't pay it much, much mind before then, but like I got that sewing machine and I saw all those colors. I was like, man, I want to make a work of art with this one of these days. That wasn't really like a seminal moment and like the birth of legit kids. That was, I was, you know, in my late twenties and wanting to have a good time, but, mm-hmm. but I looked at fabric differently at that point and um, taught myself to sew. Um, I was struggling on the sewing machine quite a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. And then Leela, who was my fiance at the time, came over to my apartment and and I was about to rip my hair out and uh, she she pushed a little button that dropped the presser foot on the sewing machine and that made all the difference uh I'd been trying to sew with the pressure foot up for for a couple of hours and, and once that thing was down man I was good to go uh <laughs> oh so you know I just I just made like some grill covers and just like functional stuff aside from that 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 kilt but yeah um I like the idea of building with fabric. And then fast forward quite a bit, Leela got into quilting and told me to leave it alone. Like, I don't care about quilting because I I thought about it like most straight guys my age think about quilts. I mean, they're, they, they look all right, but you know, it's just, just kind of out of my wheelhouse, you know, I'd rather carve wood or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But then we started going to shows Mm -hmm. and I saw some of the art quilts and I just thought it was awesome. Uh, she also made a nine patch quilt early on, and I was inspired by that. I grew up in the 1980s, um, and my first job was working for a computer graphics company. And it was, I, I drew images pixel by pixel. 
Um, and they, they were big pixels back then and you couldn't pick that many, but I wanted my first quilt to be a pixel quilt. Um, mm -hmm. I did a, a Darth Vader pixel quilt for our metal son and it was like 1264 pixels. It's my first quilt. Um, wow. and it, I think it looks pretty good. And I wanted to do this TIE fighter on the back, you know, and it's the one mm -hmm. with the angled wings on the sides and, mm -hmm. and I wasn't sure how to do that. And Lila was like, well, that sounds like paper piecing. And I said, like, what's that? She's like, well, Google it. And so I Googled it and I saw a quick little paper piecing guide and uh, I studied it for a few minutes and it just kind of made sense to me. And so my first paper piecing pattern was Darth Vader's TIE fighter on the back of that quilt. I did it by hand on graph paper. Um, wow. And while I was doing that Darth Vader one, my other son wanted a stormtrooper and I looked up stormtrooper art online and I found this artist named Liam Brazier. He's in the UK mm. and he has just this awesome looking stormtrooper. It's kind of looking down at you. Oh. Um, it's angular. There's shading. It just looked powerful. And I was like, I want to make that. Yeah. I don't know how I'm going to make that, but I want to <laughs> make that. So um, I'm also an entrepreneur. Um, I became a landlord several years ago. Uh, I met other entrepreneurs in the, in the landlord scene and I kind of had that mindset. Um, so when I started thinking about how to do that as a quilt pattern, it seemed really hard. And when I started searching for quilt patterns, there wasn't anything out there that I really liked. So I was like, mm -hmm. well, I, I'll just do this on my own. I'll just make my own thing. Yeah. So I reached out to Liam and I said, hey, you know, I want to make your, your trooper into a quilt pattern. And if if I do this, um, I've been kind of tinkering with the idea. It seems really difficult. So I, I think there actually would be a market to sell something like this. Yeah. And uh, if I did that, can I do that? Can I pay you a royalty? And we came to a really easy agreement. And he said, okay, but the one thing is, um, several people have reached out to me about that and nobody's been able to do it. And that was exactly what I needed to hear. <laughs> okay, like, nobody's okay. done this before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like to do hard things. Yeah. So I spent 18 months working on that pattern. Oh my God. And I I redrew it with graph paper. What I'm kind of thinking is I could do some screen sharing with you if you want to splice that into this. Uh, is that weird? No, um, I can definitely Because then it should be a little easier to talk about it. Yeah. So this is Trooper. <gasps> um, and I just loved the, uh, the, the depth in it. I loved the shading. I loved the color. And so, like I said, I spent 18 months working on this thing. Wow. Uh, and that's not every day. You know, I have a full-time job. I have three kids <laughs> yeah. um, that are in grade school and now in, one of them's in high school. So we're busy. Yeah. Um, and I just did it in my spare time. I spent a whole lot of time thinking about this. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking, how do I organ? Because I, I came up, I was trying to figure the colors out. I was using that printed Kona panel. Mm-hmm. And I was holding that up to my phone, trying to get the colors to match, uh. <laughs> you know, and you have different light. And I found out that thing was really terribly off of their actual colors. The first version of this thing, a year and a half into it, was a disaster. Oh, no. It was a, it was a mess. I, I actually threw the quilt top away. <gasps> um, oh, no. It was so bad. I couldn't stand it. And oh. uh, I just started over. Um, yeah. so this is my, the sketch that I worked off of that I was, that I was doing with just the different, um, angles wow. and stuff. So this is me redrawing it. So then I took this and I, I, I got big paper from Amazon and laid it on my dining room floor yeah. and drew the pattern full scale. And I knew that I was going to screw it up. I was, I was convinced of that. I knew that was certain. So yeah. I needed to make a copy of the pattern and I just had a regular printer scanner fax machine at home. Yeah. So I decided to do a seven and a half by 10 inch block to make this. Mm -hmm. So I took this bigger image and cut it into seven and a half by 10 inch blocks. And I knew that that would be easier for me to handle in a sewing machine. Mm -hmm. um, I needed to organize 
60 something colors for this right. design. And so I just started using the alphabet. It's like, well, you know, alphabetical order, that's easier to do. And I didn't want to go by the name of the fabric. I just wanted a quick code. And so I started out with A and then B and then C. And then once I got to the 26 color, because I didn't even know how many shades I'd chosen right. in this image, um, I did AA, BBCC. Yeah. Uh, and so my the Kona code for legit kits works based off that because as we came up with more designs, um, we I, I just kept adding to the colors. Yeah. Um, so I just added more letters. So some of the some of the um, some of our shades mm -hmm. are so some of our colors the code has actually makes sense. And in other ones, it is just nonsense. Like brick is AA because that's the letter I came to when I was looking at a red. Yeah. Um, but like gold is AU because oh. I'm, you know, into chemistry and stuff. Yeah. So the way to organize all legit kids fabrics is to um, alphabetize the fabric by color code because then you come across them in the pattern that way. Yeah. And so you just flip through your stack. So my second design was this Boba Fett design. Oh my gosh. Um, it's 125 shades of Kona. <gasps> um, it's the whole dang rainbow. Oh. Um, and this was done, one tester completed this. When I first started doing legit kits, I had to pay money to find people to test our designs. Uh, and I say hour because I started out drawing these by hand myself and I knew I knew there was a better way to do it, but I yeah. also knew I didn't have time to learn that. Yeah. And I was being coached by an entrepreneur who said, you know, people are looking for jobs, give them jobs. Yeah. So I searched and I found graphic design artists, um, honestly, all over the planet. The mm -hmm. sun never sets on legit kids. Um, yeah. <laughs> I've got, there are artists that, that are really good at specific things. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, that's what makes the difference with with legit kids designs is there i use I, I work with a lot of people to get something cool um the name legit kids came out because of that stormtrooper pattern we were called quilting space studio mm. and nobody could remember that name hmm. um it was it studios or studio it mm -hmm. was something about space. I can't remember what you're called. Well, so with that Stormtrooper design, uh, Kelsey, a tester who did the one that I showed you the image of, mm -hmm. um, she made it for her boyfriend. And when he walked in and saw that laying on the bed, he said, babe, that quilt is legit. <laughs> and I loved that. I yeah. just loved that. So I was like, I'm going to rebrand this company and we're going to call it Legit Kids. Yeah. So we did the storm. We did the the stormtrooper, and then the Boba Fett, and then I spoke to an intellectual property attorney who said, "Stop doing Disney stuff." Oh. It crushed me because I cannot tell you how many hours were spent working on these designs. Yeah. Um. I've not sold any of them, um, and I stopped doing all of that because I don't want to get sued into oblivion yeah, and no. also mm -hmm. as somebody who's developing a company that's based off intellectual property i get it i mean yeah. there's a lot of really cool stuff i want to do but in the end um i want to have the rights to do it uh, yeah. i would love to do a bunch of star wars stuff but i need to get in with disney first to do that yeah and i don't know if that'll ever happen right uh, you just never know so with a big the, machine like that <laughs> yeah yeah um that's incredible i just yeah like, yeah i was really proud that that got made and i was devastated to kill it but yeah. i knew it was the right thing to do the right thing to do is often hard yep um so this is that first um pixel quilt i did so that's my first quilt wow um don't zoom in too tight uh Never. there aren't very many straight <laughs> lines in it um uh, but i mean it, it came together yeah that's uh, awesome and then there's that first paper piece batter so uh i used a little bit of shading in it um that looks it's proportional. incredible 
and I did the 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 cockpit of it. The center of it is actually applique. Oh, okay. There. But I kind of okay. the the window on the octagonal window on the front. I sewed mm -hmm. it on. Um, okay. Figured out the lines and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just a I'm a chronic tinkerer. Okay. Um, and then so once Star Wars was was officially done, yeah. I started just looking at what what I think is cool. I was inspired by several things with legit kids. Um, I was inspired by my history with computers. Um, a big event that happened to me as a kid was we went from a CGA graphics card, color graphics adapter. That was a four color graphic card. And mm -hmm. two of those colors were black and white. Right. Uh, you also had cyan and magenta. And mm -hmm. then we, I saved up my allowance with my little brother and we bought an EGA card, which was 16 colors. And that's what a lot of quilt designs are made of is about 16 colors. Cause I, I think that happens because that's about as many shades as you can pick out in an outing at a store before you start getting a little cross-eyed yeah. and before the lady at the cut table starts looking at you funny. Oh, yeah. And everybody in the line behind you is like, she brought the whole cart. Yeah. Um, so the big leap in graphics was going to VGA, mm -hmm. which is, which is 256 colors. And that mm -hmm. made the screen look so different. Well, Kona has 365 shades mm -hmm. and I use Kona. I chose solids because there's no directionality and there's no wrong side. With foundation paper piecing, you're flipping triangles over and you get yeah. a little cross-eyed sometimes. But with Sona, with Kona, it's dyed through. Yeah. Um, so there's no wrong side to the fabric. It makes it easier. And it also gives you those powerful colors. Mm -hmm. So I just early adopted Kona. Um, yeah. Haven't really, I've looked into some other fabrics and we actually did a partnership with Cherrywood mm. um, recently. Yeah. So there is a legit kits cherry wood design that's also in Kona. Wow. Uh, so if you want to get it in cherry wood fabrics, go to Carla's website. And if you want it in Kona, then you can come over to ours. Um, I wanted the, the as somebody who dabbles in art, mm -hmm. who kind of has all, all his life, most of what I made didn't work. You know, I had a, an idea that I thought was cool. I made a thing and then it just it was like, eh, toss it. <laughs> but every once in a while, when you're making stuff, you do something that's super freaking cool. Yeah. And I mean, I can think back to stuff I made 30 years ago, and I still, I still get that feeling that like, mm -hmm. yeah, I did that, right? Yeah. So that's what I wanted Legit Kids to be. I wanted Legit Kids to be the quilt pattern company where you make stuff that everybody comes over to your house to see your quilt. Mm -hmm. Um that that when you pop it open people just suck air and they can't believe you did it um so that's what i'm going for with legit kids um i throw away far more art than actually goes through mm -hmm. um i'm very big on composition uh, how do the design elements and the imagery that we're making the quilt out of work with each other? Uh, every angle is planned. Um, the colors are carefully chosen, and there are renditions after renditions made of the of the art before it becomes a quilt pattern. Mm -hmm. um, it's a pretty complicated process yeah, that we go through. Like um, We've, we've figured it out. Like I said, there are specialists in different areas that I work with. Um, there is not a pattern writing software that does what we do right. um, yet. I think that we may develop that someday, but I've got so many irons and so many fires right now. It's not, <laughs> that's not the number one priority. Yeah. That's a future um, you but, problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. It's a future you problem. And there, there are plenty of them with this endeavor. Um, sure, sure. So all the legit kids patterns are hand drawn. They're drawn by graphic design artists. And it makes me really proud to be able to pay artists to do what they love. Yeah. So yeah. I work as the art director for legit kids. I get, I just kind of see it when, 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 when I get an idea for a quilt and, and I've got a, a list of them longer than my arm. Um, I already see, I, I know what I want it to be. Yeah. before before it's there and so what i do from that point is i um 
Sometimes I sketch a little bit and I send that to an artist. A lot of times I look for existing art that I can pay that artist for the rights to do mm-hmm. uh, and, and, then, and then do our, our thing to it and get it um, into that low poly angular designs, low poly, low resolution polygon designs. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I have an art team that I work with and they love being part of this. They love seeing the quilts come to life. They're, they're really impressed that this is actually working. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, I, Legit Kids has about 20 employees now. Okay. Um, so it's, it's, it's really humming along. We're growing at a very crazy rate. Um, and I'm happy with that. Uh, like I said, yeah. I like to do hard things. So yeah. uh, we're kind of always pushing the envelope. Um, sometimes I come up with designs just to see what quilters will do. Mm. Um, we came out with one of the things I wanted to do that was kind of, I it just hadn't seen before, uh, was a, I wanted to represent a 300, a, a three dimensional object in a two dimensional space mm-hmm. um, in, entirely. So the first thing I thought I wanted to do was, how about the Statue of Liberty? Mm-hmm. Like I wanted to do a pieced back on my quilt. And so if this, if we did the Statue of Liberty, you get the front and then you look at her from the back. And because I like those like helicopter angles from movies where you see the the radiating um, crown coming out of her head. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, that'd be neat. Yeah. But then the back of the Statue of Liberty is just rows. Mm-hmm. So I, I started thinking, I was like, so what's the most famous sculpture in the world? And I started laughing. <laughs> um, David by Michelangelo. Oh, yeah. So I was <laughs> like, let's do David. And let's do him 360. So we have a 360 degree quilt, fully pieced front and back, uh, anatomically correct, matches the matches the statue, uh, included an optional fig leaf. I saw the um, fig leaf, <laughs> and and, I, and and the the cover of it says optional fig leaf included. Yeah, uh, the cover photo has him has him covered, mm-hmm. but the real thing is 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 not so. Uh, oh and God. that one was so much fun because. I teased a lot of people about that for a while. Uh, I, I called it Project Zephyr for a <laughs> long time. Uh, and people were like, Zephyr, oh, it's a Valkyrie because uh, of the wind. And I'm like, no, actually, it has nothing to do with the wind. It's just <laughs> something you've never seen before. And, that's all, and, and I've given away too much already. Uh, yeah. So I teased people for quite a while while the pattern was being written. And it was a bugger to do. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, because every point on the front of the border of his body lines yeah. up with the back. Uh, um so you can quilt through it you can quilt the background as one unit so um some quilters have done trapunto in on each half Uh and 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 gave them some curves in certain places and then built their sandwich and then quilted through it um david won a lot of quilt shows um one of the fun things is that you put a clothespin on the quilt so that you you turn it right well on the david quilts there's oftentimes two clothespins there's one to to look at the back but there's also one for the fig leaf yeah which uh <laughs> david is the most interactive quilt at the legit kits booth uh at shows that will have him uh he's, <laughs> he's we've asked we've been asked not to have the david quilt at at some particular venues uh, and we honor that. I can imagine, but uh, also. But most places, <laughs> uh, people come to our booth or from around the corner where we have him posted, and you can hear people cackling the whole time while they're taking pictures with him. <laughs> and they, they shamefully bring us the fig leaf and say this thing fell off, and then we have to get on to him for playing with it too much. <laughs> um, but I I just I wasn't sure what quilters would do with it. Uh, yeah. One of the testers in the group said, you know what I'm going to do with this? is put it on my guest room bed Mm. face down not say a word and let my mother-in-law discover it (laughs) and and that's just that's just fun and and i i chose to do david for for one because a naked man is always funny (laughs) it doesn't matter it doesn't it's always funny so he's been a lot of fun the the one i'm currently working on Mm -hmm. um that's that's pushing the envelope a bit is we are about to start testing the first ever 
quilt that works with 3D glasses. So the old school red and blue glasses. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a pieced quilt made out of Kona solids and nothing else, foundation mm -hmm. paper piece, and then you're going to put on 3D glasses, and it jumps out at you. What? Because um, <laughs> I haven't seen that before. So, yeah. you know, I'm just what I'm having fun with this. Uh, we're about crazy. to come out with our 50th design. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, we I launched a company in 2020. Okay. Um, and we're about to launch design number 50. Okay. Uh, this year, uh, for our 50th design, we're going to release the Kraken. Oh my uh, I've gosh. got a 60 by 80 inch purple Kraken with these uh, iridescent pinkish eyes. Really pops. Wow. Shadows in the background. Um, and I, I'm I'm stoked about it. I'm really what stoked. I, I love all of our designs. I'm proud of every single one that we've done. Yeah. Um, and it's neat to see them winning quilt shows all over the planet. Um, yeah. It's yeah. humbling to have had this company come so far in such a short period of time. It's, it's really cool to interact with people in the quilt world. Mm -hmm. um, and I, it's yeah. just so much fun. Yeah. You're, the designs are stunning. And like I said, I'm new to your, to your stuff, but and I, I think like I get so much spam sometimes that I'm like, okay, what is this? And then, but I'm like, okay, I'll, I at least look like if it's like, don't click, you know, click this link. If it's not like that, then I'll, I'll check it out. And as soon as I saw your stuff, I was like, okay, I'm going to talk to this guy. Like, <laughs> that's so cool. It was just like, everything just pops and it's so intricate and detailed. And I've, shared with so many people i was like i'm gonna talk to this guy on the show and look at his stuff i'm like go look it up i've just sent so many people to the website because <laughs> i'm like like i still can't believe that those images can be made with fabric i mean i know it because i know paper piecing can do amazing things and and yeah. i know quilters are amazing and the fact that you have these ideas and you've built this team that can create these is just so fantastic and like people are itching to create and so giving them something that's like you can actually make works of art and do these things with your hands and not have to come up with it yourself you can follow this pattern and here's all the fabric and I think that probably for like paper piecing especially it's like finding the right fabrics and the right colors and if you have to pick all that out of your own stash it can be really like it can be kind of daunting and I know that's what keeps me from using scraps a lot of the time is just making sure I have all the right colors and things. So the fact that you guys are making the kits to go with your patterns is like, you just take all the guesswork out of it and like build, lets the, the quilter have the confidence to make this beautiful image without messing it up, right? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, we, we do, so I had input because I wasn't a quilter before I started writing these patterns. Yeah. Um, I came into it green and, and, that actually was an advantage in some ways. I mean, I spent forever on that first design, but I also, I didn't know what the rules were. Mm -hmm. So I didn't follow them. Yeah. Um, and I, I made it up on my own in a way that made sense to me. Um, I like to help people. I like to teach people. And so I, I, used, I came at legit from that angle. Mm -hmm. um, and I wrote it, I came up with these pattern designs um, for somebody like me yeah. who had never done a pieced quilt before, I needed to be able to make this thing. Yeah. I did one pixel quilt and then I started working on Trooper. Right. So um, coming at it from a completely novice angle allowed me to not be biased by my own experience. You know, I think mm -hmm. that sometimes when you're good at something, because I, I see a lot of a lot of quilt pattern designers, they've been making quilts for a while. I think that's the natural progression of it, right? You've made 40 quilts and now you're, you've found your thing and you want to write your own patterns and stuff. Uh, but, um, and I, I think that the testing community out there is really valuable for this, but um, by not making assumptions of anybody, mm -hmm. I wrote legit kits patterns to be beginner friendly. They're not fast subs. Right. And some of them, like our Monarch butterfly that's 115 colors and over 2000 pieces, mm -hmm. that's going to take even experienced quilter a long time. But yeah. by breaking it into blocks, 
-hmm. It's bite-sized. It's easy to manipulate through your sewing machine. Mm -hmm. There are no Y seams in any of our patterns. Mm -hmm. It's all straight line sewing, one, two, three, four. Uh, we supply about twice the amount of fabric that a quilter needs. Okay. Um, the the feedback from all these tester groups was, you know, I with foundation paper piecing, the stressful part is worrying about saving enough fabric for that next piece. Mm -hmm. So we encourage people to do the big the big broad blocks first, like the background imagery mm -hmm. stuff that 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 just has a lot of just solid color. Yeah. Uh, you do those first, and then you don't have to worry about your scraps. But also, we give you about twice the amount of fabric needed, so you can screw up, so you can um, cut it wrong. Mm -hmm. And then also, I legit kids hasn't enough fabric guarantee. Uh, if you run out of any color for any reason, let us know. We'll stick a fat quarter in the mill to you at no extra charge. We've got oh, it wow. at our office. Um, we want people to finish these quilts because the more of these quilts are out there, the more people are going to go, oh my gosh, I got to get one of those, right? Yeah. Um, and also because there's a lot of work in these things and I don't want somebody to get like 90% through it and then spill wine all over their white. And then, yeah, well, white's an easy one, but there are a lot of shades that are hard to find of Kona. Yeah. Uh, we still have trouble and I've probably got 600 bolts of Kona. Um, Whoa in racks I, I think that legit kits is probably the most colorful place to work uh, because we have racks and racks and racks of kona everywhere and then quilt yeah. kits with the the kona sandwiched in them everywhere yeah um so legit kits is a color explosion but the other thing about giving so much fabric is i wanted to leave something to remember your project by. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that happens in two ways with every kit. You get a refrigerator magnet with mm. your kit. It's just a little business card size refrigerator magnet. It's got the design on it. Uh, and it's nice little colorful pop for your kitchen. Um, and we also sell them because some people, they say, well, I, ga I gave my quilt to my mother-in-law and then she took the magnet to onion and our magnet. So uh, <laughs> we, we, we send you one of those if you need it. Um, so that's awesome i do i like having scraps of of projects because honestly like like scraps are hard for me to use but my mom's real good at it and like we run our business together so um it's fun to have that because she'll grab those scraps and she'll put it all together and make something new from it and it's like incredible to see it have a different life it's like okay that was meant for this thing but now it has another life in this other mm -hmm. you know quilt or this other project and you know my niece and my sister are kind of um dabbling and learning to sew and quilt with us and um so it's fun to watch them go through the scraps and see their like joy and wonder at the colors and the, you know, fabrics that we have. And so I just love that idea of just having little remnants behind that can be worked into something else or just to just be there in your, in your scrap bin to kind of remind you of that cool project you made and that you did something really cool that looks really hard and, you know, drops people's jaws to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So we give you plenty of fabric. People are doing a lot of fun stuff with that. They're they're kind of piecing backs together or doing borders around it. Or yeah, like you could get a digital copy of the pattern and do it again if you really want to. Yeah. Um. So the quilters want fabric, right? I mean, yeah. like if I sent you a ruler, well, if you buy three kits, what are you going to do with three rulers or or three tote bags or you know, we've all yeah. got that. Yeah. Um And I know that. I mean, my house. I'm not sure how many yards of fabric are in our possession because my wife does um, repurposing. So oh, she goes to Goodwill okay. and buys old pants and old sheets and old whatever and, yeah. and, and pieces them and does an amazing job. Uh, she's being featured at art shows, not just quilt oh. shows, but art shows now. Um, and one of them, she's making us another cashmere quilt. So she bought a bunch of old cashmere sweaters and that's the back. So she pieces, you know, she cuts the wow. holes out of the sweaters and then yeah. it's, it's a cashmere quilt. Wow. Um, so we, fabric is just everywhere. Yeah. And I love it. It's great. 
Yeah. Um, so the, we just we we give quilters fabric because that's what they yeah. want. Yeah. Um, so to organize the fabric, we use that letter code, and I mm -hmm. standardize it across the board. Okay. So the same letter code applies to the same color no matter what pattern you're in. Oh, and a lot of smart. people who have been using our, doing our designs have converted file cabinets to legit kids fab cabinets. Oh. So they can just open the file drawer and their fabric is in there all in the alphabetical order and you just riffle through it and, okay. and get to that letter and pull it out that way. That's so mega um, smart. <laughs> and that's how we organize it at the office as well is it's the bolts all have that letter code. Yeah. Um, and so we organize it by the same letter code that the quilters do yeah. um, because and because we label all our fabric as well. Uh, so, you know, if you get Skulliver, that the, the iridescent skull we have, you get 106 <laughs> shades of Kona. And it's pretty easy to get those backwards with each other, right? Um, yeah. Some people are, I get questions all the time in the Facebook group. There's a closed Facebook group. You just have to answer questions on it. And it's mainly the filter people out but there's yeah. over 4,000 people in it wow and they're all working on legit kids quilts and sharing their tricks and tips and stuff it's a really fun group but we always get somebody in there new who says should I pre-wash my fabrics and I always just scream no because you're going to take all those stickers off all those fabrics and wash yeah. everything and then not know what color it is Ugh. Um, I'm not I'm and, not a pre-washer anyway so <laughs> yeah well and and you know I was kind of worried about that so yeah. Um, I don't know if you know this or not, but we, up until two weeks ago, we had a fire truck that we drove to quilt shows. So oh, I yeah. found an old heavy rescue truck from Craigslist. Wow. Old. It's from the year 2000 to me. That's not that long ago. But um, <laughs> our fire truck would go to quilt shows. It had legit kits fabric department written on the side of it. Big, oh heavy gosh. turbo diesel engine. Yeah. And um our fire truck caught fire. Oh. My fire truck burned down. How dare uh, so we it? Got hit. We were struck by irony. Uh, the beast <gasps> went out in a blaze of glory. Oh my God. Uh, I did a tribute video for it. Oh. It was surrounded by other fire trucks. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it was around its people when it happened. Oh it's kind of God. beautiful. Oh. But we had a lot of smoke damage to a lot of our example quilts. Oh, like, no. they looked bad. The, the, the fire, you know, there was... The, the quilts were in rolls. Okay. Uh, and our, we, we, can't, we can't do one quilt roll anymore because it was weighing more than 100 pounds because we've got a lot of example quilts that we take to these shows. So yeah. while the truck was on fire, Hayden, the driver, was pulling the quilts out the back. Oh. And the, the firemen shared the 911 call with them. Uh, there's an ambulance and this guy's pulling bodies out of the back of it and because they're about the size of it. But anyway, he saved the quilts, but they they had fire hose spray on them. They had smoke oh, all over them. They were greasy. Yeah. And so I just, I put them in my home mach washing machine because they were, they were, you know, yeah. bad shape. And I'm not going to guarantee that Kona never runs, but I'll be darned. These quilts were wet and smoky for, for, days before i could even get to them because they were in yeah. an impound yard oh god um, yeah. they didn't bleed at all wow they came out great wow i i started out by throwing like a half dozen color catchers in the washing machine with them yeah and you know they had some color on them but then for one of them i just forgot and i washed it without color catchers and pulled it out i was like oh no not a drop of lead wow um so you don't need to pre-wash your fabrics and don't do it with our stuff because you're never going to get your stickers right yeah. Uh, I, I did have a person who wanted a whole lot of fabric because she got her, she showed us her quilt and you could tell that she got her colors mixed up. You could tell she pre-washed uh -huh. and, and we honored our enough fabric guarantee. We gave her a lot of fabric back. Yeah. Um, but don't pre-wash your, don't pre-wash do your kids. Don't do it. It's not, you're not going to get your stickers right. It just not can't happen. It. Yeah. <laughs> we, oh, we organize, we, I did design legit kids to work with whatever you want to do. Sure. So if you want to match your own colors, we list all every shade in gradient order. So if you do want to use your own stash, just hold it up to the paperwork, hold up to your computer screen, match it up, call it that letter and go. There's, there's yeah. the Conan designation listed. There's the uh, size of cut you need. Mm -hmm. um, 
the next part of the kit, you've got a, a letter, an uh, alphabetized list of all the fabrics by mm -hmm. letter code. So you can you can check to make sure they're all there, and that's how you build your little stack of fabric. However, you want to organize that. Yeah. Um, another thing about legit kits is is space saving. Mm -hmm. Since my wife was already a quilter, um, she had taken over the extra room, and so when I was working on my stuff, it was on the dining room table, mm -hmm. and it had to come off. So those seven and a half by 10 inch blocks fit in a notebook folder. Another yeah. reason I did that. So your whole project can fit in a notebook folder. Yeah. Um, when That's you're smart. in between, you know, when you're not working on it. Um, yeah. And that space saving thing is pretty nice. You don't have to use a design wall. A lot yeah. of people do because they like seeing it come together and you get like half those blocks and you're like, oh, I got to keep going and see the next part. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Another thing our, our customers love, our quilters love, is when they sew these weird colors together, sometimes it's just, because it's just letters and numbers on the pattern. Mm -hmm. They're like, what even is this? It doesn't even, yeah. and then they piece it together and it's like, that's the hand or, you know, yeah. whatever. And they're like, I can't believe I just made that. That's yeah. the fun of foundation paper piecing is you see, you, you, you make this crazy stuff out of these weird pieces. People yeah. compare it to making the jigsaw puzzle pieces first and then building the puzzle afterward yeah so that's so uh, cool that's so cool i yeah, feel really I'm, lucky to be in this space and to have this yeah. company and to be to be doing art and yeah. making it work yeah. it's really fun yeah well i am committed i'm gonna make skull over and all right I showed it. I was like, okay, I need to pick a kit. Like, which one am I going to get? And I was like showing my mom, I was showing my husband and they both were like, I mean, you're going to get the skull, right? Because <laughs> little known fact about me is I was, and still a little bit am, um, kind of obsessed with like pirates and skulls. And like when I was er still kind of early in college, but uh, my apartment was decorated with like pirate stuff, like posters and skull mugs and you know you name it and that was like the time of pirates of the caribbean so anyway they were like you're naturally going to get that correct and i was like well yeah okay <laughs> that's the one but then i saw starry night and i was like oh my god that's my husband's favorite painting of all time so i was like great now i might have to commit to getting another kit because i mean that one looks a little if you decide to reach out to me i know a guy that can hook okay you up. okay great cool cool, cool. yeah i'll uh I'll keep you up on that but no I I just I honestly still like I keep scrolling through and I'm like yeah I can't my brain can't comprehend making these things out of fabric and the like two or three tiny things I've done with foundation paper piecing it's like we're very basic but I can I see the things that other people make and I'm like okay like this is something so cool and I think that was one of the things I loved about crochet is that you can make so many weird shapes with it just based on the way you stitch it and the way mm -hmm. you build your stitches. And like, um, there was like this whole Ted talk about this lady or that I can't even remember. It was a long time ago, but she was talking about this collective of crocheters were making like a replica of the great barrier reef, like the coral. Oh, and that's awesome three-dimensional I'd love to see that oh you'll have to google it because I literally can't remember what it's called but um yeah it's like the crocheted coral reef and she was talking about the the mathematics behind it and how you can just you can build these things with crochet because of how you build the stitches and all these things and so foundation paper piecing is is like that where you can make these odd shapes and put these weird angles together and and so these like little intricate details that just straight piecing you could never do, but because you have it all lined out on paper and you've got these like exact lines to sew and the guidance for it, you can make these super detailed images and it just blows my mind. <laughs> like it's yeah, just yeah, so without the, there's no way I could sew any of this stuff without the pattern. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, there's just no way. Because I was, yeah, that, that's why I came around to it with that yeah. Stormtrooper design at the beginning. Because it was, yeah. like, this would be so hard to do if I didn't break it down into steps, break it down into pieces. Yeah. So. And I love that you're 
you approached it in that way that's more bite-sized so people can tackle something more difficult in smaller chunks because I think sometimes bigger projects like that can seem really overwhelming and but just working on it piece by piece as you can watch it slowly come together like I love stuff like that and because building like putting blocks like piecing is not my favorite part like I would it's for the birds I'll do it obviously because I have to but I love when I get to put the rows together finally and everything starts coming together and I love yes. long arming like that's why I have a long arming business but it just seeing it come to life and giving mm -hmm. it that personality to finish it off like that's my favorite part so I can just imagine like seeing this work of art come to life through these like little chunks at a time like I'm just I'm very excited to to make mine and just get it hanging on my wall because you know yeah I'm sure there's like a huge point of pride for people to say I made that <laughs> and you're yeah that, oh, which is so cool please if if you're interested please scroll the legit kids Instagram it's not too far back it's a reel mm -hmm. uh there is a quilter who did Sculliver and glow in the dark thread and so what you get the you get the you know the, the all those colors in the daylight and then it flips over and the eyes and the teeth just light up it's super freaking cool and I oh the, that's I I get endless satisfaction out of seeing what quilters do with this stuff yeah you know because I feel like I'm still giving you raw materials with mm -hmm. the with the pattern and the for the quilt top. You know, it's a quilt tuck. It's the beginning. It's a, yeah. it's a real good start, but it's still the beginning. And I just love seeing what long armors do with it. I get, I, there's some, um, oh, I don't want to get her name wrong. So I'm not going to butcher it, but, or, or just say it wrong, mm -hmm. the wrong name. Uh, but um, there is a quilter who's done several of ours who machine quilted our King Tut one. Oh. Um, so just tabletop machine with a pogo stick. Um, I'm gonna have to share that with you. Okay. Um, and she she's one blue ribbons with it. Wow. Um, and the fact that she did all these hieroglyphics in the background, um, just with a tabletop machine, um, yeah. is just so freaking cool. Yeah. Um. Oh my word. So this was done on a on a standard tabletop machine. Okay. Um oh yeah, look at all that. I am just blown oh. away. She did the whole thing on her tabletop. Wow. Uh, so I was like, this is a great long arming. She's like, well, no, it's not. <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah. That's um, incredible. Yeah, and with Tut, so that challenge. Uh, was can we do something that looks like metal yeah out of solid fabrics yeah and i think we did it you did um it. you know tut usually has a bit more of a blue cast to those highlights on his eyebrows and the um the headdress mm -hmm. but um this is based off of a photo uh, and the photo was lit in a way that it looked more purple. And I just mm -hmm. love that because it makes me think of Mardi Gras. Yeah. Right. You got the, the gold, uh, and the, and the purple, yeah. not much green on there, but still, I just, it just looks royal to me. It just yeah. feels, this yeah. feels really cool. Um, and so yeah. after we did, after, right after we doing Tut, we did Sculliver. Okay. Um, and because I love that that metal look. I was like, I want to do a metal skull now. I've I've carved skulls out of wood. Uh, I love pirate stuff too. I just yeah. love I love skulls. And then I'm medical, so yeah. I see all these skulls uh, in imaging at work. CT scans that are reconstructed. I I don't the straightforward skulls boring to me. I mm -hmm. I wanted something that's tilted. You can see that zygomatic arch where there's that. A cool hole for the muscles to pull our jawbone up and yeah um i wanted to use the colors of elemental bismuth mm. it just spoke to me and so that's that that's that um crystal that grows in the the crazy squares mm -hmm. um and yeah. so it's kind of an iridescent metal color 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and maybe it doesn't read metal, but it's 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 metal to me. Uh, yeah. Or just a, it was just a Skulliver was more popular than I thought it was going to be. Really? Um, yeah. I, you know, um, I think that one of the things that that has helped us be stand out so much so fast is that I have a pretty masculine point of view, mm-hmm. um, and you know, there's there's a lot of cute skulls out there. Uh, and I wanted to do, I wanted to do something that was like an electric guitar version of the skull, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. Just way more color and, and a way more dramatic angle. And yeah, uh, I I keep putting that out there. There's a lot of anxiety about doing that sometimes, especially it was at first. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't want to get cocky. Uh, I'm still really critical of what we do, but I've been surprised by how popular some of our stuff has been because some of the things I did just because I think it's cool yeah. like I don't know if this is actually going to sell but I just have to do it you know yeah. um yeah to me yeah. it's it's the money is important because it allows me to pay all the artists to do this and you can't have mm-hmm. a business without it um right. but I'm not going to compromise the art because of the money Mm -hmm. I'm not going to not do something because I think it's not going to sell because honestly, there's been several designs like Skulliver. I didn't think it was going to just explode. Skulliver was just blew every record we had out of the water. Wow. Um, And it's beautiful. I was like, all right, let's go. Yeah. (laughs) You know, uh, yeah. I'm just going to keep doing stuff I think is really freaking cool. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Well, and I think that's staying true to limits. Yeah, staying genuine to to yourself and staying true to what, you know, what is truly you. I think that's what people get drawn to. It's those makers and and companies that feel genuine or make people feel like they're included are the ones that I think that stick around or have the longevity or make the most impact because people feel seen and heard by what they're offering. And you know, I've never seen anything like your designs and you know the people I've shown have just been like are you kidding me like these are quilts I'm like yeah they are this is bananas and so I think that shock factor is there that value of like surprising people they people love to be surprised and not in a scary way but so I think that's there and and yeah your perspective is bringing about this idea that you know cool things can be made and you can have that like rainbow aspect in there but not be like feminine in in any sense or not that that's bad but like I think yeah I don't care one way or the other yeah but but I just think sometimes people want a more masculine feeling quilt or want a more you know just like a like you said a different perspective on something that's generally either just like straightforward and like boring like a skull or you can change the angle and you can add all these different colors and make it something more and special than than what's already out there and so I mean I think you're doing a great job I can't wait to you know get through get through a complete pattern and and then I'll have a hundred percent certainty but just seeing that the popularity that's going on you know you've got several sold out kits and you've got more designs coming and that's it's just and we're so working cool. on that i don't want to be sold out of anything yeah. uh, but it's hard to keep up with you know because when you've got 106 shades in a in a design and you're short one fabric well yeah. it's not complete right uh so yeah. it, it's a lot yeah well congratulations to you and like thank you for talking to me today because this has been so cool and like i'm really looking forward to sharing this with my listeners and followers and hopefully you'll get some new fans and and new makers grabbing some patterns to make and more to share out in the world and hopefully they check your stuff out that's already out there too well thank you so much this has been a whole lot of fun i am so glad you had me on here um uh, if you want to do another interview anytime i'm here awesome Uh, i'm not going anywhere um and uh i'm just gonna keep coming up with cool stuff Good. So that's that's my plan. That's my business model. <laughs> I like it. Well, thanks again. And any we can go to legitkits.com to find you. And I'll put links below so people can get to you easily to your Instagram and to the website. And yeah, hopefully we'll talk again soon. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks.